So here we go. All right. So what, what no, leave it off because it it casts a shadow on your face somehow. Oh. Um, this is picking it up fine. Um, so here, I'll read you the question so the video camera hears it, um, and then you can go ahead. All right. So the easy questions. What is your full name, and do you know why your parents chose that name? Do you have any nicknames? Charles John Diggins. The Charles was named after my father, and the John was named after my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Did you have any nicknames when you grew up? Yeah, Chippy. Chippy? Okay. Yeah. Well, we know where Chippy went to. Um, all right, where were you born, and what year were you born? I was born in a... Hammond Hospital of Worcester, Mass, 1918. Is that hospital still around? Is that hospital still around? Yes, it's still there. Oh, it is? It's part of the uh, UMass system, or UMass oh, has yeah. three hospitals. Yep. Hammond is one, Quinn Sigmund is another, and uh, one more. Do you know the other one? Same yeah, on Belmont Street there. Oh, Memorial. It's not, called, it's not called Belmont Street, but... Yeah, it was, Mo, uh, it was Memorial Hospital. Memorial, yeah. yeah. UMass Memorial. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> um, let's see, why were you given... No, you already answered that. Um, can you tell me about your siblings? Siblings? I guess six children. No, your, your sisters. Sisters? Well, I have two s- sisters, Virginia and Marjorie. Uh... Each about a year and a half younger than I am. Um, what about your parents? What were their names and uh, when and where were they born? My father's name was Charles. He was born in Worcester. And my mother's name was Helen. And she was born in Worcester. So the family didn't go far in those days. Yeah. Um, all right, what about your grandparents? My grandparents, my, uh, grand, my mother's father's name was Hiram Jewell. As far as I know, he was born in Worcester, too. And my grandmother, she was also Worcesterite. On the other side, my grandfather Diggins, his name was John. He was born in Bellas Falls, Vermont. And my other grandmother, Annie Sullivan, Diggins' name was, she was born in Worcester, too. Okay. Um, Let's see. Can you tell me a little bit about the house you grew up in as a child? The house I met most was on Barnard Road. Uh, It used to be a big apple farm there, and they tore all the apple trees down. I built as a development of homes at that time, back in the early 22, I'd say. I was three or four years old when I went there. It was a great place to live because we had a park across the street. There was always something going on in the park. Uh, Ball games, football games. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then on the other end of the street, we had a great big field we called the Blueberry Field. Oh, yeah. And my sisters and I used to go blueberry in uh, July whenever they were ready. And we would go from house to house selling the blueberries. And we used to get 10 cents a quart for the blueberries. Um, there was a lot of money there. What do you remember about your bedroom growing up? About what? What do you remember about your bedroom growing up? Well, I remember I, I used to have a strong interest in baseball. And uh, it used to be a baseball magazine. You have pictures of all the, the ball players, like Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. I had the pictures all around the whole top of my bedroom. That's cool. Um, here's a good one. I like. I'd really like to know this one. Who was more strict, your mother or your father? My my mother was. She was the she was the boss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he did something, and she, she'd reach for the strap. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, what church did you go to when you grew up? Uh, St. Bernard's in Worcester. Okay. Um, all right, so um, you told me a little bit about your chores, but the camera didn't pick it up. Can you tell me about your chores when you grew up? Chores? Yep. 
Well, I used to have to. In those days, we had a washing machine, an easy washing machine. They didn't have cycles. You fill the water, you use that water once, see? And that was down in the basement. My job was to fill it. And also, when my mother was through washing the clothes, and would empty it. And then, of course, they had to wrap the garbage. That was another job. And, uh -huh. <clears throat> and I shoveled snow in the winter and cut the grass in the summer. Um, who were your childhood heroes? Who would you say your childhood heroes were? I think it was Babe Ruth. And why is that? Well, because he played, he came to Boston to play the Red Sox one him. And my uncle took me down there to see him. Because we, and he, he hit a home run, which I still remember that very clearly. Okay. Um, all right. What was school like for you as a child? Um, what were your best and worst subjects? Well, I, I liked history. And I think math was probably the worst. Really? <laughs> um, where did you go to school? Where did you go to grade school? His name was the Adams Square School. It's a grammar school. Um, do you know, is that still there? It is. It's not there anymore. They tore it down. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Um, did you participate in any school activities or school sports? Well, when I was in grammar school, I played in the Bugle Corps. Mm -hmm. We used to have a lot of Bugle Corps in Worcester, and they were at all the bands. And then when I was in high school, I, I played at a, the band in high school. And I also sang in the chorus, the musical parts. That's cool. Um, let's see. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your friends growing up? Do you remember your friends when you grew up? Yeah, I remember pretty well. I had a friend, Andy Hunter. We went to see him down at Cape Cod. Oh, yep. Yeah, I remember that. He, he died a couple of years ago. Another fellow, Charlie Higgins, he lives... The next house to me. <laughs> Charlie Higgins and Charlie Diggins. Yeah, Charlie Diggins. <laughs> and strangely, he went to the Cape Cod and he lived down and he lived in Mashpee. Oh, yeah? After he retired. Then there's another fellow by the name of Jerry Davis. He lived about, we were classmates in high school. And he lived a mile or so away from me. And when he had an interest in guns, and that was where I got my first experience. With guns. Mm -hmm. See, in those days, kids could have guns. You go through the streets, put on the trolley car, no one would bother you. Yeah. Today you get arrested. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, here's a good question. When you were a teenager, do you remember what your curfew was? Well, what? When you were a teenager, do you remember what your curfew was? Well, we had a being when the lights went uh, came on. When the lights came yeah, on? Summertime, everybody, 30, quarter, nine, yeah. yeah. There was no fool around those days. There's no places to go. Yeah. So we used to play, like we play play uh, soccer on the street and play catch on the street. There was not many cars in those days. Yeah. So you could get away with it. Um, <clears throat> you talked a few minutes ago about family dinners. Um, can you tell me more about what your typical family dinner was like? Well, one thing I used to like was, was cocoa. My mother always made that. We never, she, she and my father ain't drank tea, but the kids, we had cocoa. And Saturday night was always frankfurts and beans. Uh -huh. And she made the beans. Saturday and Friday night in a special electric cooker, cooked them overnight, and by Saturday night they were all ready to eat. Good. Um, and through the week we had things like hash and hot dogs. And in the course of wintertime there weren't many vegetables. There was no orange juice. They used to buy an orange. She had to cut them in half and squeeze a half of orange, give you that for orange juice. Uh -huh. um, let's see, what's next? Um, 
Here's a good one. What world events had the most impact on you while you were growing up? I think it was when uh, Pearl Harbor, the most frightening possibility. <coughs> when I was in the Navy at the time, I was in Jamaica. When they said Pearl Harbor had been attacked, I didn't even know what it was. I never heard of it before. Because we didn't, <coughs> didn't know that much about geography. Then the whole world changed. Everything tightened up. I made it. Uh, let's see. Um, what was your first job and what did you like about it? The first real job I had was I got a hustle and went to U for U.S. Steel and was a machine shop. And uh, I learned to run a lathe and power drill, things like that. Mm -hmm. I liked it because it was challenging. I said really to learn something that was Withful that it carried through life. Yeah. Do you remember how much you got paid? Paid, I got uh, $26 a week. Wow. Uh, what didn't you like about the job? Didn't like about it? Yeah. Well, it's a long way from home. I had to take a trolley car, I had to make three different changes to get there. Wow. Uh, what else? <clears throat> um, are there any inventions that you really remember as being important? Well, I remember when they came out with sliced bread. <laughs> because up where I used to cut myself, the little lo bread used to come on a big loaf, you know. Right. And as kids, we had a, if you want a piece of bread, you had to cut it yourself. Ugh. It's kind of tricky learn how to cut this soft, mushy bread. Yep. So they come out a little, and they come out with sliced bread. Boy, that was really improvement. Wow. Um, all right. When did you learn how to drive? And can you tell me about your first car? Well, my grandfather, Jewel, he's the one who taught me how to drive. He'd take me out. He'd take me out every... On his days off, we used to go a place called Coe's Pond. They had a great big parking area there. So you could do a lot of experimenting and backing up and starting. And, uh -huh. and we went for, I had to go for an examination when to get your license. They were a lot stricter in those days. You had to be able to back up and park your car in a, for just one car length. You had to be able to stop and start on a hill. And that was hard because you there was no automatic transmissions. All right. It took a lot of practice. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of hills in Worcester. Yeah. So, um, what was your first car? First car I bought was a, 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 a I think it was about a 34 Ford Coupe. But I didn't have it very long because it was a turned out to be a piece of junk. Was it used? Was it used? Was it me? No, no. No, that was been about maybe 10 years old. Oh, okay. But I only paid $10 for it. You know. <laughs> Do you remember what color it was? Yeah, it was red. Nice. Um, what were some of the uh, the fads when you were a young adult? Like uh, clothing or popular music or things like that? What are some of the like social things that you remember? Well, I used to have popular songs that you could learn and sing. Mm -hmm. Today they don't have that, see. Everything's rock and roll. Yeah. And the popular songs, they'd be rated one through ten. Next week it'd be, that number one would be down to five, and, and that's how it works. Yeah. And a woman used to wear skirts way down about their ankles. Yeah, now they wear them right up to their butts. <clears throat> the boys, we had to wear knickers mm -hmm. until I was in high school. And then you get into high school, you get to wear long pants. Um, what's the difference between knickers and pants? What's the difference between knickers and pants? I don't know. 
Between two pants? No, between knickers and pants. Knickers come to about here. Okay, so like up to your knees? Yeah, up to your knees. And then pants and are... And flush them out, see. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what else? How old were you when you met Grandma? Well, I was about 19 or 20. Um, and what did you two do on dates? Well, she, I used to have dances at the... She went to West Wilson High School. We went to dance at the high school. They'd have them after a basketball game. Um, how did you propose to Grandma? I think I said with an arm. I can't recall specifically. No, okay. Um, what else? Um, <laughs> uh, this is important. When and where did you guys get married? Do you remember when and where you got married? Yeah, we got married at St. Stephen's Church in Framingham. 1941. I think it was June. Yeah, I think it was June 1941. Good. Um, hmm. What do you think is important to a successful marriage? I think the most important thing is you have to make concessions. You can't be domineering. You got to be open-minded, see? Uh, what's next? Um, what's your proudest moment as a parent? Proudest moment? Yeah. What's your proudest moment as a parent? As a parent? I think it's probably, I think, when the first one graduated from college, I think it was Mary Ann. Because she was the first one in the family ever got that far, see? Mm hmm. Um, all right, can you tell me, um, how many children you have and when they were born? Unless we have Betty was born on August 25th, 1942, I think. Sandy was born on, uh, October 20th, 1st of January, and yeah, sometime in the late 40s, Colleen was born back about 1960. Uh, was born in South Shore Hospital, I think it was on the 4th of September, 15th or so. I remember in those days, we, they allowed you to open the windows, we went to the sidewalk and waved to us, she was on the first floor. <laughs> first floor was maternity in those days. Mm -hmm. um, and when, do you remember when Chippy was born? Chippy was born July 1st. Yeah. 61, I think it was. In 61. He was born at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. Um, do you have a favorite story about my mother when she was growing up? be a house by the hospital there and they had a pear tree. So your mother was little, oh, maybe two years old. And there was one pear on that tree and I hoisted her up and picked up to her. Yep. 
Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else? Um, what's the most memorable family vacation you took? I think we went to, uh, we went to California. It was 1952 or 53. Uh, we traveled all the way from San Diego on the coastline right down to Mexico, the Tijuana. At that time I went to visit a factory. They built the first helicopters that we had. Hella helicopter. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Grandma Kaufman was living and she, she rode up with us and we, we left her off in I can't remember where it was anyway. Uncle Jimmy was living there, I think it was in Arizona. Mm -hmm. We left her off there and picked her up on the way back to come home. So did you drive from here out to California? Yep. Wow. That was a long no trip. In those days. Um, can you tell me about some of the trips that you and Grammy used to take? I know you guys traveled all around the world. Um, like you've been to China, where else have you been? Yeah. Just to China? Well, yeah, I went to China. We went to uh, Tokyo from Newark, New Jersey. From Tokyo we went to Shanghai. And uh, Shanghai, they took us on a tour. It was a motor tour, not a motor tour, but a, on a boat mm -hmm. up the river, <coughs> up to the conflicts where two rivers flowed together. And we saw a, a terrible erosion. The water had rushed out all the yellow clay mm -hmm. and the color of the whole big river, all the way from 10 miles up right down to the end of the ocean. Wow. <clears throat> and from there we went to a little town, we went by train, on a little town, Suzhou, about 50 miles from Shanghai, and get on the train, the people were there where they had pigs, they had their feet tied, they had chickens, they had, uh, well, had electric motors, they had these sports on the shoulder, you know, across by in two baskets, mm -hmm. they balance each other. So those chickens, it was ducks, and little, little pigs, and motors, and it was a very hot day. And all the people were hanging out the trains, hanging out the windows. Oh gosh. We got the, uh, Trying to get some fresh air. Yeah. Then from there we went to, we went to visit a commune, and we in the commissary of the commune took us on the tour to their hospital. And the hospital was very basic, with about like what we had 50 years ago. And we went to have a little hall where the women were making shirts for men. Mm -hmm. And then we went down on the main area and they were having a yard sale. They didn't have tables of everything, they threw blankets out right on the ground. Oh, really? And they had little pigs, ch chickens, ducks, everything for sale, but they had all their legs tied together so they couldn't fly away. Hmm. Um, what's the highest honor or award you have ever received? Either military or civilian. Well, I got an award from the governor of Connecticut who went to we spent two weeks, I uh, had a bad flood. I think it was 1956. I spent two weeks down there uh, bringing food to people, picking up people that were stranded. Um, can't think of the name of it. It was a 
National Guard base where we stayed. Mm -hmm. Of course, that letter goes in your record. That's uh, we did pick a woman. Well, the whole side of the building had <coughs> washed away on a canal. There was a woman standing there. She had a cat in her hand. We dropped her. The, we had slings in those days. Dropped the slings. She got in that with a cat. And we, we saved her. Wow. Um, what else? Um, all right, we're going to change gears a little bit. What traditions did your family have? When you were head of the household, what were some of the traditions your family had? Well, uh, having all the meals together, having a big meal on Sunday, it would always be roast beef. Roast beef and mashed potato and gravy and whatever vegetables they had. Going to church on Sunday, another tradition. Um, what do you know about your family name? What do you know about the name Diggins? Like the history of it? Well, I came. My great grandfather and his wife came from Ireland. I don't know where in Ireland. But, um, they lived, he and she both. Well, they came next door to each other. They were neighbors. That's how they met. They were quite young. They took a boat. When I came to New York, they spent three months at sea. And one thing the great grandmother said, she'd never go on a boat again. <laughs> and from there, they came up into to New York State. But uh, it was such severe winters, they moved to Vermont and started a little farm up there. Hmm. And that's where he died. That's... Um, all right, you may not be the best person to ask, but this is important to me. Have any recipes been passed down from you from other family members? Are there any family recipes you can think of? Scrambled eggs, hard boiled eggs. Recipe. Um, what about like church windows and angel dessert? Do you know where that came from? Is that something grandma made or she got we that from someone? We never had things like that when I was a kid. No. We never had anything very fancy. No. My mother used to make a lot of pies. Apple pie in season. Or blueberries in season and blueberry pies. Uh, she made a lot of puddings, rice pudding. But other than that, I can't remember anything unusual. Okay. Because those days, they didn't <clears throat> buy those things at the store. Everything was, had to be homemade. Right. Um, what were your parents like when they got older? Well, my mother. She liked to tell us a lot of stories about her youthfulness and her family. But my father didn't live that long after he retired. So I can't remember much what he said because I wasn't living there, see. They were wish at that time mm -hmm. on the road. Um, do you think your parents had a good marriage? Yes, they did. Um, let's see. All right, we're going to change again. We're almost almost finished. Um, have you accomplished what you wanted to in life? Oh, no, I think I could have done a lot better, but now that I look, I see that I've done pretty well in comparison with other people. The problems they're having and the fact they didn't save any money and never looked forward to retirement. Um, what accomplishments are you most proud of? Personal comp What personal accomplishments are you most proud of? Well, I learned to play the trumpet. And I liked it. And then the World War II came along. 
And I never got near, near it again. Then when I got home after World War II, my mother had sold it. So that ended my career playing the trumpet. <laughs> Do you think you were good at it? But in those days, a lot of pretty good jobs if you could play an instrument. You could play uh, at dances, you know, and you make mm -hmm. 50 $60. Yeah. Because there isn't too much of that now because they have uh, tapes, everything has tapes. And right. They don't do any of it. Hmm. Uh, um, what is one thing that you want people to remember about you in life? That I didn't drink, I think maybe. That's pretty admirable. Um, what else? Are there any stories about famous or infamous members of our family or relatives? See, not that I can think of. No. Uh, nobody got arrested I know of. Nobody ever murdered anybody. Um... All right, here's another question. What do you remember about me when I was born? Are you a good little guy? <laughs> Easy to get along with. That's good. What else? Um, dun, dun, dun. Um, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you were young? What do I have now that I wish would know? What do you know now that you wish you knew when you were young? I think maybe I should have sold this house ten years ago. The price was up. I didn't need it. But somehow I'm stuck here now. Prices have dropped. And it's going to be a problem to take care of. Um, Alright, we'll go on to another question. How would you define a good life or a successful life, in your own words? Well, I think this person has a happy life, happy family. He has to have enough earnings to be able to little, maintain a good standard of living. And he's got to be stable. Okay. Um... Do you think a person needs to first overcome serious setbacks or challenges to be truly successful? Do you think a person has to overcome um, certain boundaries or challenges to become successful? Yeah, if the problems you have are serious. Yeah, like if you drink or you have drugs, and you have to overcome those things before you can become successful because then you wouldn't get a good job. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what do you see as your purpose or place in life? And how did you come to that conclusion? Like, why did God put you here? Well, I don't know. He must have had a reason. He never explained it. Because... I wonder how I would have lived so long because all my friends are gone. Uh, I guess maybe to keep an eye on them, all the family. That's a good answer. Um, all right, and this is my last question. What advice would you like to give me? Well, don't get involved in drugs or drinking. That spoils a lot of people's lives. And you got to save your money. People make big mistakes. They spend right up to what they earn every week. And they're desperate for help. 
It saved me money, I said. Mm hmm. Uh, right now, there's not many good places to put your money that's paying any interest. And even bank accounts don't pay much. Uh, that's why, if you're ready to go to school, you can invest in yourself with education, things like that, or buy. Buy a house, car you're going to have anyway. Mm -hmm. That's the nearest thing you come to making a good investment. Right. You you, uh, you you got you still got your car? I do. Yep. How's it running? It's running well. Still good. gets me from A to B. So hopefully when I get back, I'll be able to upgrade to something a little more fuel efficient. But right now, yeah, I'm doing what I have. It's a gas heater. Now, how about when you go away, what are you going to do with it? Um, it'll just, we'll probably put it in the garage, um, and Amanda will just drive her car. Yeah. So, um, if I knew that I was going to go away for a whole year, I probably would sell it, but I could be back in just a couple months. Yeah. So. I know still on a Fort Sill. We went to one place and saw hundreds of cars parked. Appeared no one was using it, evidently. Mm hmm. <laughs> I presume those guys have been deployed. Yeah, on post they have storage, um, but they also have um, a parking lot on post where you can, <clears throat> you have to register your car, but you can put it there with your cell phone or other information, and it's like a for sale lot. And people will call you and you can sell your car that way. Oh, good. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm noticing it's about 5.20, so um, do you need to you get ready? To go. You want to get on there? Yeah. If you're, I don't know what else you need to do to get ready. 